I arrived at Don Juan's house in the early morning of Sunday, April 9th. This was the first time I'd really been aware of what I was doing there. For three months, I actually looked forward to going back. Suddenly, I had remembered something transcendental to me. I had remembered that once in my life, I had been very patient and very efficient. Before Don Juan could say anything, I asked him the question that had been pressing hard in my mind. For three months, I had been obsessed with the memory of the albino falcon. How did he know about it when I myself had forgotten? He laughed, but did not answer. I pleaded with him to tell me. It was nothing, he said with his usual conviction. Anyone can tell that you're strange. You're just numb, that's all. I felt that he again was getting me off guard and pushing me into a corner in which I did not care to be. Is it possible to see our death? I asked, trying to remain within topic. Sure, it is here, with us. Well, how do you know that? I'm an old man. With age, one learns all kinds of things. I know lots of old people, but they never learned this. How come you did? I know all kinds of things because I don't have a personal history, and because I don't feel more important than anything else, and because my death is sitting with me right here. He extended his left arm and moved his fingers as if he were actually petting something. I laughed. I knew where he was leading me. The old devil was going to clobber me again, probably with my self-importance, but I did not mind this time. The memory that once I had had a superb patience had filled me with a strange, quiet euphoria that had dispelled most of my feelings of nervousness and intolerance towards Don Juan. What I felt instead was a sensation of wonder about his acts. Who are you, really? I asked. He seemed surprised. He opened his eyes to an enormous size and blinked like a bird closing his eyelids as if they were a shudder. They came down and went up again, and his eyes remained in focus. His maneuver startled me, and I recoiled, and he laughed with childlike abandon. For you I am one Matus, and I am at your service, he said with an exaggerated politeness. I then asked my other burning question. What did you do to me the first day we met? I was referring to the look he had given me. Me? Nothing, he replied with a tone of innocence. I described to him the way I'd felt when he had looked at me and how incongruous it had been for me to be tongue-tied by it. He laughed until tears rolled down his cheeks. I again felt a surge of animosity towards him. I thought that I was being so serious and thoughtful and he was being so Indian in his coarse ways. He apparently detected my mood and stopped laughing all of a sudden. After a long hesitation, I told him that his laughter had annoyed me because I was seriously trying to understand what had happened to me. There was nothing to understand, he replied, undisturbed. I reviewed for him the sequence of unusual events that had taken place since I had met him, starting with the mysterious look he had given me, to remembering the albino falcon, and seeing on the boulder the shadow he had said was my death. Why are you doing this all to me? I asked. There was no belligerence in my question. I was only curious as to why me in particular. You asked me to tell you what I knew about plants, he said. I noticed a tinge of sarcasm in his voice. He sounded as if he were humoring me. But what you have told me so far has nothing to do with plants, I protested. His reply was it took time to learn about them. My feeling was that it was useless to argue with him. I realized then the total idiocy of the easy and absurd resolutions I had made. While I was at home, I had promised myself I was never going to lose my temper or feel annoyed with Don Juan. In the actual situation, however, the minute he rebuffed me, I had another attack of peevishness. I felt there was no way for me to interact with him, and that angered me. Think of your death now, Don Juan said suddenly. It is at arm's length. It may tap you any moment, so really you have no time for crappy thoughts or moods. None of us have time for that. Do you want to know what I did to you the first day we met? I saw you, and I saw that you thought you were lying to me, but you weren't. Not really. I told him that his explanation confused me even more. He replied that that was the reason he did not want to explain his acts, and that explanations were not necessary. He said the only thing that counted was action acting instead of talking. 